It's almost November. You know what this means. SAP TechEd is just around the corner. And this year, SAP's premier event for developers and IT professionals gives you the choice to either participate on-site or virtually. Isn't that cool? Join us to get to know the latest updates about SAP BTP and learn how to organize, model, and analyze your data from all your different data sources with SAP's data and analytics solutions. Whether you are a key decision maker or actively working with our solutions in your daily work, SAP TechEd has got you covered. The data and analytics track features strategy sessions that outline where our portfolio is heading to, but it also offers the possibility to directly test the latest and greatest functionalities with hands-on workshops. For example, learn how to connect SAP Analytics Cloud with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud to build an end-to-end -end planning scenario. And if you are working on the database part of our stack, make sure to get to know the different data storage options in SAP HANA Cloud to optimize your cost performance ratio. Already excited? Make sure to register for SAP TechEd and experience what SAP Business Technology Platform has to offer. Stay tuned and see you in November. If you see me in this t-shirt, then you know I'm going to talk about AI at SAP. Recently, Tobias Knetsch published a blog post, What's New in SAP AI Core and AI Launchpad in Q3 2022. His post only provides a high-level overview of the latest features and enhancements. You can find complete details on this and other features in the SAP Help portal and the respective pages for SAP AI Core and AI Launchpad. So, what new features did Tobias speak to highlight? Let's see. First, a release of the Computer Vision package, which provides a fast and easy way to build computer vision use cases on top of SAP AI Core. Second, improvements to make working with deployments seamless and enjoyable, like patching all deployments that rely on the same serving template in one go. Third, a possibility to connect both business entity recognition and data attribute recommendations from SAP AI Business Services to SAP AI Launchpad to train your custom models and to deploy them. And fourth, more flexible authorizations for SAP AI Launchpad. You will find detailed descriptions and further links in Tobias' post. We are slowly coming to the end of DevTober Fest 2022, but we still have week four to go. Good news is it's not too late to tune in and get involved. For week three, we had 16 sessions, and now for week four, we'll have about 14 sessions coming up. Here's a recap of week three session and week four session. Monday was all about ABAP. Week three, we had a two sessions on ABAP day. We had our first session with DJ Adams and Carl Kessler, where they had a broad and in-depth discussion on the evolution of ABAP, where it came from, how it grew, and then we had a session on ABAP troubleshooting tools in Eclipse with Rich Hallman and Ingo. For next week, we'll have a session with Michael Keller, where he talks about his first contact with ABAP and gives us a three-step approach to getting started with ABAP. We'll then have a session with Andrea Fisher on a beginner's guide to the ABAP Repsol application programming model. You'll learn how to use proven and new technologies such as core data services and behavior definition and implementation languages to build SAP Fiori apps and OData services using RAP. Tuesday for User Interface Day, we had two sessions, one on clean SAP UI5 and how to make SAP UI5 JavaScript code more readable, maintainable, and testable, and then another session on testing UI5 apps with WDI5. For next week, we'll have a session on improving the performance of UI5 applications with Peter and a session with Marco on building beautiful native application with SAP Fury for iOS for UI. Wednesday for Data Analytics Day, we focus on SAP Data Warehouse Cloud for data and analytics. We had sessions with Klaus Peter and where, where he gave an end-to-end -end overview and demo of the product. We then had a session with Denise where he presents the strategic features of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, the so-called SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP BW Bridge. Week four is going to focus on SAP Data and Intelligence with Thorsten Happ. For Thursday, low code, no code, it was all about process automation with these five sessions. For next week, it will be all about SAP WorkZone, which provides for business users an efficient access point to their apps and business data. We will learn more about it with these four sessions. 
And for our Cloud Native Friday, we went over the two part of the SAP BTP Kima Runtime session with Gaurav Abi, and then we learned the basics of containerization with Joss Bentley. For week four, we'll go over how to build and deploy a UI5 application to Cloud Foundry that consumes an ABAP-based backend system and develop your first CAP application on the SAP BTP Kima Runtime. And lastly, for Fun Friday this week, we played the Flying Money Game Tournament created by our very own developer advocate, Nico. We also brought back the Detoverfest Gaming Night. This year, we focused on a few games such as Fortnite and Mario Kart 8, which developer advocates played at various times and streamed to be watched. For week four, we'll get together with a few other engineers to play How Did I Not See That? We'll be getting together to tell our own stories on how we wasted inordinate amounts of times on silly mistakes while writing code. This was one for you to definitely not miss. There will be two sessions to work best with your time zone. Be sure to check out with three blog posts to get a more detailed overview of the sessions. Node version 19 was released this week and it comes with a few exciting changes. Keep Alive is now enabled by default. This means that any outgoing HTTPS connections will automatically use HTTP 1.1 Keep Alive with a default waiting window of 5 seconds. An experimental watch flag has also been added that will restart Node when files have been changed, possibly replacing tools such as Nodemon. There have been several updates to the V8 engine and LLHTTP as well. Several tools such as DTrace, SystemTap, ETW support were removed due to a lack of resources from the Node.js team. Node.js version 19 will replace version 18 as the current release line when 18 enters long-term support later this month. If any of your SAP projects are using Node version 14, this is the right time to update to version 16 or 18 as support for 14 will end in April of next year. Be sure to check out the links below for more info and happy coding! Last week, version 5.0 for the SAP BTP SDK for Android and 8.0 for iOS got introduced by email Wuta in his latest blog post on the SAP community. The new versions for both SDKs include improvements of existing UI components and the addition of new components ready for you to be used in a new and exciting enterprise apps. But not only that, accessibility features for the SAP Fiori for Android elements got further improved as well. To give you a sneak peek into the new and improved components, I want to quickly highlight some. There is the object card and list card available now, which in the case of an object card represent a flexible container displaying critical information regarding a single object and the list cards displaying a set of items or objects in a vertical list. The object cell got further improved to include additional information like tags, an avatar row, badging on icon and avatars, as well as a description field. The object header, buttons, text input fields and the onboarding flow got additional features as well. To get the full overview and details on how you can try out these amazing changes today, follow the link to the full blog post in the description of this video.